Hello everyone welcome back to another episode of Harrison explained and today we are going to discuss the differences between multiple sclerosis and Guillain Barre syndrome Let's start off with the pathology GBS is an autoimmune acute polyradicular neuropathy it is classified into different variants like acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy acute motor axonal neuropathy acute motor sensory axonal neuropathy and regional GBS variants like Miller Fisher syndrome on the basis of pathology AIDP is the most well known among these MS is also autoimmune characterized by inflammation gliosis demyelination and neuronal loss 70% of GBS cases occur due to infection either respiratory or GI Campylobacter jejuni is an association very commonly seen in exams CMV and EBV are also associated with GBS GBS will generally follow 1 to 3 weeks after an infection the strongest susceptibility to MS is due to HLA DRB1 gene on the MHC we have also discovered genes for IL7 receptor IL2 receptor and and LFA3 which also play a role Moving on to the clinical manifestations GBS involves rapidly evolving areflexic motor paralysis which is ascending in nature you will also see tingling dysesthesias in the extremities as the paralysis progresses the lower cranial nerves are involved and thus the patient will have problems in handling secretions and maintaining an open airway Pain in the neck, back, shoulder and spine is also seen in 50% of the patients. Bladder dysfunction is only transient and a different diagnosis should be considered if present as a prominent sign at an early stage. Autonomic signs like BP fluctuations, postural hypotension and dysrhythmia will be seen. Sensory symptoms may be present or absent. MS can be insidious or abrupt onset. Symptoms can be severe or very trivial where the patient may not even go to a doctor for checkup. You should check for sensory symptoms like paresthesias which include tingling, prickling sensation, formications, pins and needle feeling or painful burning. Hypesthesia is seen too which includes reduced sensation, numbness or a dead feeling. Pain is also seen. The next thing you should check for is optic neuritis which is usually unilateral but may be bilateral. Periorbital pain will be present. The fundoscopic exam may be normal or show papillitis. Uveitis however is uncommon and suggests a different diagnosis like sarcoid. Weakness of limbs is another sign you should look for and exercise induced weakness is characteristic of MS. Diplopia due to internuclear ophthalmoplegia is seen and bilateral INO is suggestive of MS. Some symptoms are present for a very brief duration and appear very frequently. They are called ancillary symptoms. The most asked among these is Lermit sign which is a electric shock like sensation radiating to the spine upon flexion of the neck. Moving on to the lab investigation CSF protein will be elevated in after 48 hour of onset of symptoms in GBS but the lymphocytes will be normal sustained pleocytosis suggests a different diagnosis a mononuclear pleocytosis will be seen in MS with increased IgG PMNL or protein concentration above 100 g per deciliter should point towards a different diagnosis diagnosis a clinical diagnosis is sufficient for GBS and treatment is started without waiting for confirmatory lab tests and electrodiagnostic tests. For MS, MRI can detect 95% of cases and you will see multifocal lesions in the brain, brain stem and spinal cord. Prognosis: 85% of the patients are fully functionally recovered from GBS in a year and the deaths are usually due to pulmonary complications. Patients with a favorable prognosis in MS develop few MRI lesions in the initial year and have less brain atrophy and vice versa. Treatment options. Treatment should be started immediately in GBS once the diagnosis is reached. Plasmapheresis or high dose IVIG is given. IVIG is generally preferred due to a good safety record. For an acute attack of MS we give methylprednisolone and if that is not effective we move on to plasmapheresis 
This brings us to the end of this video. If you like this content and would like me to cover more difference based videos, hit the like button. If there are any topics on neurology you want to see, let me know in the comment section. Neurology is nearly over and we will be moving on to another section of medicine after one or two videos. If you are here for the first time, consider subscribing. See you in the next one.